my name is uh, Dr. Geoffrey Wango. Okay. I'm a counseling psychologist okay. and a lecturer and a senior lecturer at the University of Nairobi. Okay. For most people, they don't know what's mental health. Mm -hmm. Probably you can dissect for them to know what's mental health. Thank you. Um, health has several dimensions. Health has something to do with how well we are. And it has five dim dimensions. It has our physical, our psychological, our spiritual, our moral, and our intellectual well-being. There at uh, psychological, we also talk about psychological well-being. We talk about uh, uh, mental well-being and our emotional well-being. So psychological health has touches on our, the well-being of our mind. How well we synchronize aspects of our lives, our way of living, and how we go about, about our daily lives. Mm -hmm. So when you are psychologically healthy or mentally healthy, it, is, it, it implies that you are doing very well with your life, and that you are managing aspects of your life, way of living, day-to-day -day activities. Unfortunately, sometimes one may not function as well as they should. And in that way, they become psychologically disturbed or emotionally disturbed. And then we talk about mental illness. So health is the state of well-being in which one is doing, is managing very well or coping. Whereas mental health is, is, is a situation where the person may not be coping as well as they should. And in extreme circumstances, they can be depressed and they can lead to other perspectives of mental health like mental disorders, anxiety disorders, depression, and other aspects that now affect their health uh, uh, in, in, in so many negative ways, okay. unlike the ordinary way of living. You know, uh, speaking about mental issues, uh -huh. it's, it's one of those topics where, okay, in the first place, can Africans also be affected with mental health? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, uh, mental health affects all of us. Because most people, they see it is it's like for the Western countries, yes. this is a new concept to us. Uh, what happens is, uh, in our more traditional societies, we also had issues of people who are, uh, who are not doing as well, or they are not coping as well. And uh, in the more traditional societies, we viewed mental health, or even illness, in, 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 in two ways. Culturally, of course. Yeah. and then religiously. The, the, the only problem is the, the way we are intertwined between our culture and our religion. You see, in the, in the more African setting, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the, let me call it traditional setting, the culture and the religion are one and the same. So when someone appeared like they are psych psychologically disturbed, we attributed the same to something religious something they had done, mm -hmm. something like uh, they had been cast. Okay. So there is something that they did against the culture or against the gods. Mm -hmm. So that's what we called mental illness. Okay. But now when you interpret it in uh, psychological terms, modern times, of course, and medicine, you now start getting that what we called, what we look, looked at as someone who is cast, someone who has annoyed the gods, and the gods have set upon him or her, they are, they are, they, they, they are cast or their anger. Now we, in psychological terms, now we interpret that because we know what it is. You know, this person is maybe frustrated with life, they are depressed, and they are suffering from aspect of mental illness. Okay. So that's why in our more traditional societies, we look at these people with more of stigma. There is something that they did against the gods or against society, number one. Then number two, we look down upon them, and also we want to hide them. Because we are like, well, the reason why this person is not doing as well as they should is because maybe they did something against the gods. And we don't want people to see that our families and clans have been, are, are doing something against the gods. But now in the more traditional, now that's in the more traditional, now when we come now to the modern, we change that now. Now we understand it. Because we understand that this person is psychologically disturbed. Because... Maybe of their way of life. Yeah. Let's say someone is taken into drugs and substance of abuse. Let's say someone is too anxious. Let's say someone is taken into, into even alcohol, too much of it. Let's say someone is disturbed by a relationship mm -hmm. or at work. Mm -hmm. Let's say COVID. Mm -hmm. So all these aspects affect the person. Mm -hmm. And what happens to them? They become psychologically, emotionally disturbed. And as a result, we, this is manifested in their psychological unhealthiness. Okay. And now we term that as mental illness. So how should the, the society support such like people? Very important. 
the first the first part is to understand that uh, health is very important and that's why we must emphasize the five aspects of health the psychological the the the, the social the intellectual the the, sp the spiritual and, and and the social so when when, when when we start understanding health in these five aspects we can now interpret the psychological aspect mm -hmm. the mental health okay how can we support this person the first way is to is, is to understand that mental health with due respect like all other illnesses is a disease just like any other so it is not that this person has been bewitched this person has been cursed by the spirits this person has annoyed the gods all those aspects we we leave them aside okay and we look at this person who is unwell and then we will seek for ways that they can be treated and now there are two ways that we treat psychological health the first is interventions aimed at preventing mental illness from taking place and, and in psychological terms we talk about coping people learning to cope more and more with life issues day-to-day mm -hmm. -day and daily aspects but then another aspect now is what we are trying to ask maybe treatment mm -hmm. treatment has two aspects it has the psychological interventions which is we call counseling and psychotherapy and it has the medicinal value because like now people who are suffering from mood mood disorders mm -hmm. they need uh, they need uh, antidepressants mm -hmm. and people who suffer from depression and uh, bipolar 1 and bipolar 2 mm -hmm. may require clinical treatment Mm -hmm. that is more specific to okay. those aspects okay mm -hmm. you've told uh, you've talked about the the kind of treatment eh? mm. but before we go to treatment i want to ask you mm. how can you self diagnose that you have <laughs> mental we, we have, we have <laughs> mental. that's a nice one <laughs> the, the, the actually mm. on a daily day to day basis we are now actually call it activities of daily living uh, so how can you might tell that you're not doing very well i'll tell you this directly uh, we go point by point point eh? by point <laughs> yes yes the easiest way to know whether you're doing very well with your life is to ask actually look at your aspect of daily life and health and i'll give you the easiest aspect which day is it today can you tell which day it is it's the easiest thing when you are psychologically disturbed you can't tell which day it is that's the the most basic thing it's uh i i try to teach people psychology and people don't know the most basic thing in psychology let's say today today's tuesday where is it written that it's tuesday nowhere it's all of us but all of us in our mind we know today's a tuesday it's a very fascinating thing people don't know the second thing is today is the seventh of may why is it reason it's the seventh of may the third one is what time is it it's one one o'clock two o'clock and the first thing you notice when you ask somebody, if you notice some people who are psychologically disturbed, they don't know which date is. They don't know which date it <laughs> but, is. But uh, I'm always like, uh, those people who know dates are uh, those people who are going to be paid dead monthly. <laughs> ah, well, if, if you even if you try, if you uh, that you can see this, and I and I'm challenging you to see it. Okay. Even when you when people start getting older and they get dementia, if you ask them which day it is, they tend to have a problem with the memory. That's where I was going for. Okay. I was going for an inter the psychological health interferes with the memory. So when it interferes with the memory, you may not you may not know that when the end of the month. But I'm certain that if I ask you which date is today, you take a bit of time and you pick it up. Now you agree. Mm -hmm. So that's why the men the the, the, the mental health the first way you start doing this, you start ask looking at activities of daily living. It's the easiest thing. The second one, and you see. And the first one you have contacted is a bit. Mm -hmm. I want you to look at the second one. Mm -hmm. The person remembers to take a shower. Simple things, taking a shower, washing their clothes. And I would like you to try it. And you see, when people are psychologically disturbed, they don't do simple things in life. Like taking a shower, not they are washing their clothes, knowing that you are supposed to change their clothes, knowing that you are supposed to eat. It's children we feed, not adults. That's why when we give you food, we pick the bread, and you give yourself food. The next day you find people who are mentally disturbed, that's the first thing you notice, that they actually have to be fed. They have to be told to, that they need to change their clothing. I mean, that's why the typical way of people who we call uh, in the village is that they are sick. What is their characteristic from ourselves? The cleanliness, <laughs> the clothes they wear. <laughs> now you're green. <laughs> they, 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 look at the food. They, they even let's pick another aspect: the food and the way we eat. Look at the way me and you are seated. You're seated there. I'm seated here. We are organized. But look at people who are psychologically disturbed. They don't even know turn taking. 
because psychological in disturbance has so many aspects. There's the psychological, there's the social. The person doesn't even know turn taking. The person doesn't know you are crossing the road. Well, what happens when you are crossing the road? Pause, check left lights, left again, and then you cross the road. Even when you are driving a car, when I tell this to people, they say, "Now I'm starting to think there are very many people who are psychologically sick," and they are. Now the other aspect, yeah. <laughs> the, the other aspect is now. Now, if you want us now to go to even more difficult things, is that is, 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 and, and you see this is is sleeping. If you want to know even levels of stress, let me do more of levels of stress to me, so that people don't think they are psychological. <laughs> when you are sick, when you are stressed, the first way you notice is that when you are stressed, you either eat too much or too little. Yeah, it, you go extreme. If you are if you are stressed, it is either too much, too little. If you are if you are stressed, you sleep either too much, too little. Anything, and that's why in psychology we talk about the normal calf. Anything outside this normal calf, don't ask anybody if you are disturbed. You are, <laughs> and that's why even in dressing, <laughs> even in dressing. Now, now you asked a very. You, how can you know? Look at the dressing. How am I dressed? I am just, just dressed. But now, because supposing I came here. And I'm going to show you a very nice perspective of mental health. And I have, I'm a lecturer, I have earrings, and I'm not saying earrings are bad. I have so many things, and I have so many makeup, and you're like, is this a man or a woman? Why are you having a problem distribution where I am? So, <laughs> so you start noticing that there are things you do, and you don't need to, to ask anybody, am I psychologically disturbed? When you go to, to church or to the mosque, I respect all religions, or say to the synagogue, what happens? You sit. Then you start when people say we start. But I want you to again pick the person you call sick in the society. When they find all of us seated, they come and start doing their own things. It's children who do that. Those children don't know you're supposed to be seated. So one way to tell if you are deviating, by the way, in psychology, those who have done psychology will be watching this video, they will remember that. In psych and those who have never done, I want to introduce to you a word we call abnormal psychology. Abnormal psychology is what everybody used to start, study at the beginning, and deviation from the norm. Because if you are deviating too much from the norm, don't ask anybody if you are doing badly. You are. Because if other people take four, four beers and they go home, and you take two off, <laughs> if other people are, are waiting for the for the for the water to pass because it's flooded, <laughs> and you are actually crossing this road, I seen. Do you need to ask us whether you have a problem? You have. <laughs> you, don't, you don't. You don't. You don't have to stop us. Eh? If if okay, let's quickly see, look at the way I'm dressed. I'm, I am wearing one shirt and one tie, and I you come to interview me, and I'm wearing three shirts and three ties, and you are like, okay. I can see something is not light, but you can't tell what it is. So any extremes is dangerous. Let's pick a, a quick one because I want us to be more modern. Yeah. You are always gabbering. Do you need to ask us? And you are addicted to gabbering, and, they, and you are always on the internet, okay, betting. Do you need to ask us whether you have a problem? <laughs> you don't need to. <laughs> okay, let's try one more. Yeah. Bed, 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 bed lotting. This thing that people are now staying on the bed for three days and pretending to be relaxing and that they are not busy. And you stay on the bed for three days. And then you ask us whether you are okay. I mean, <laughs> of course you are not okay. <laughs> the only thing is you are procrastinating, you are frustrated, you are, you are you quickly be suffering from depression. Uh -huh. uh, let me do for you another one. Social media. You are on social media. You are interviewing me. I have a phone. I'm not, I'm not wanting this. You can't move away from the phone. You can't switch on your phone. You can't control your use of the social media. I mean, you are too much addicted to the media. Do you need to ask us whether you have a problem? You do have a problem. So, <laughs> so this some when you go to, you start noticing you are going to the extreme. You are moving to the extreme. Let me do for you a quick one then now. Another one, fear and anxiety. What's the difference between fear and anxiety? Very simple. If you are ever bitten by a dog or you fear dogs, you fear the dog will bite you. Perfect. Nobody is disputing that. It is disputing that. And it is true a dog can bite you. But let's try another way. This dog is locked somewhere. So it's not biting you. Of course, if you have ever been bitten by a dog or if you fear dogs, you feel this dog can bite you. So there is the anxiety you feel, but the dog is locked. So now you have to distinguish between fear and anxiety. Is the fear real or unreal? Very good. But you can't always be anxious. 
I mean, you must reach a point where you control this. You must control it. Because if you don't control the fear, it moves to anxiety. It will move to anxiety disorders. And as it moves to anxiety disorders, you will be frustrated and disappointed and depressed. In other words, everything has more some moderation. Like now, let's quick to try backwards. How much sleep should you sleep? Six to eight hours. Yes. So when you are sleeping for five hours, don't need to ask. Oh, oh, what about those people who are working? Probably well, you have a lot of work. You have a lot of work. That uh, has yes. made you to and reschedule. Yes. And, 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 and if you don't sleep for, for enough time, the body catches up with you. It is something that uh, everybody admits nowadays. Yeah. You, you work three, four hours, there will come a day when the, the body itself will pick the day and say, excuse me, today I'm sleeping. And it will not wake up. Or you'll be sick. And by the way, you would be shocked. Eh? I tell people this when I teach them psychology. When you go to hospital, there are people who go to hospital and the doctors tell them, is it possible for you to just sleep there for like a few hours? And then you find the person sleep for three, four hours. And the doctor tell you, wake up and go home. <laughs> and the person is like, I thought I'm sick. And the doctor looks at you and they can notice that you are not doing very well. If you, if you, if someone never loses somebody, and it happens to all of us, like me, with due respect, my two parents have passed on. You need to be very careful about your sleeping patterns. You can be so preoccupied with what has happened that you have not actually not been sleeping. You've been turning on the bed, and that's why you notice that after the funeral or something, there are people who come and tell you, "I found myself sleeping for two full days." So they ask you. So they ask me, "Am I okay?" I tell them. You are okay. The thing is, for the other days you didn't sleep. So your body has been counting. Mm-hmm. It accounts. You haven't slept for four days. It writes the four, four hours. You have not slept four, four. You know it's going down that day. And it's saying there's four, four. Minimum six, six. But as the four, four you have not slept, tough. So it gives you the tough. Mm-hmm. Yes. So the, the, and, and so now I want us to see how this is linked to mental health. It is also linked to other aspects. Of our lives because when you come to interventions you will quickly see the connection between the mental health and what you are doing the more you go on with the normal way of living the more the body picks up like a healthy diet eating a healthy diet is this thing. and you tell people that you don't need to wait to go to hospital when you are sick start the easiest way eat a healthy diet take a lot of water mm-hmm. a bit of exercises admiring nature it relaxes the mind why the mind is very, very, is the, the human brain is the most sophisticated thing ever built on this earth, even by God. And the mind is so sophisticated. When you make it relax, it relaxes. When you don't make it relax, it will tell you there's not relaxed. How, how do you make your brain <laughs> relax? You know, yeah. It's how very do you make easy. It, yeah. It's very easy. Eating a healthy diet is very good for the brain. By the way, the food you eat is equal to your mood. <laughs> yeah, look at the people who are in a very good mood. They eat very healthy diet. They drink a lot of water. I drink a lot of water. Look even at their skin. Look at their face. Something like the easiest thing, smiling. <laughs> smiling relaxes your brain. It relaxes your skin. It relaxes your body. The body needs to relax. You need to allow it to relax. That's why you need to look at nature and a tree and a flower and a nerve and you say, my, that's nice. The brain has just relaxed from the tension it had. That's why we are telling people, wake up from where you are, stretch a bit. Stretch, just, and you tell people stretch and they are like, stretch, stretch. That's not medicine. Stretch a bit like that and like that and like that. And you stretch and you sit back. And the brain is like, yeah, because the brain also requires to breathe in fresh air that goes into the brain. That's why when you see a driver driving, they drive, then they, they lower that down the windows, or you stop and then you go outside and you stretch, then you come back. Because the brain requires new oxygen. If we stay in this room with all of us right now for a few hours, you notice that all of us are going to, 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 to go dizzy. Now I'm liking the way you're looking at it because you, are, you wonder why do people <laughs> yeah. in crowded places, including halls and churches, why are they built with very big windows uh, and most uh, the synagogues? So that 
fresh air can it enter. Turns, yeah. So when the fresh air enters, it displaces the other air. So the brain can relax. You see, it can relax. The brain relaxes. The brain requires to relax on its own. And that's why you sleep. When you sleep, you are telling the brain, can you relax? Then the brain sleeps on its own. This is the magic word. It wakes up on its own. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to, yes. And that's why when we teach people even about exams, when you read for an exam, also in colleges and elsewhere, Mm -hmm. when you read and you sit the exam and you read the question, the brain remembers on its own. Have you ever told your brain, excuse me, can you go back (laughs) and remember? It it, it remembers. Let me do the easiest thing now, because you doubted the memory. Mm -hmm. Name, uh, name your parents. Uh, name the, uh, tell me the name of your parents. You can tell. Mm-hmm. The, your father and mother, maybe. Your mm-hmm. brother, your sister, your uncles. Yeah. How can you tell them? The brain remembers. It's automatic. Them. It's not automatic. The brain knows. It, it picks. And mental health occurs when you interfere with the brain's memory. So the easiest thing is don't interfere with it. Don't get too stressed. That's why people don't understand when you, even if you go everywhere and you tell people to relax and you don't get, don't get stressed, they are wondering what is your problem. When you get stressed, the brain, you are stretching the brain. And the brain is not happy. Dr. wait, let me cut you short. <laughs> when you say like okay. people should not get stressed, what you are the things people should avoid stress. so that they cannot be oh, stressed? A, a nice one. The point is very simple. Try to, try to cope with your life issues. Don't stretch it too much. Stretch works like a rope. If you pick like a small rope like this, even like this, and you stretch it this way, beyond the limit, it will cut. Sure. That's the same thing with life. Allow life, do, deal with issues in life in a way that you are coping. Like a day has 24 hours. Never sit and imagine it is 27. It's not 27. After the 24th, we go to the next day. <laughs> so, the, the, and, and that's why we are talking to talk about even um, stre- ways to deal with stress like breathing in and out taking a walk uh-huh, drinking a lot of water by the way water is very good for the brain yeah that's why we talk about sleeping enough that's why we talk about hobbies and interest you see when you are relaxed you're thinking what do I like doing I, I, I people ask me why is it that I don't strain teaching psychology Part of the reason why I teach psychology, counseling psychology is that it's my hobby. I, I love it, and I love reading psychology. I don't, I'm not straining, and I, and I do, would not like to strain. Mm-hmm. And I would like you to try this with the people listening, and you see the comment. Mm-hmm. How many people are doing what they ne- don't even have an interest in, or they don't care? Or oh, you ask them, by the way, where are you, where you are? In the first place, I don't know. So even where you are, you don't know why you are there. So you are already straining your brain, yeah. because it is not synchronizing why I'm here, and why I'm not there. So you're already straining. You're already telling your, your brain is already not, uh, it's already having a tug of war. Let's try another one. Relationship. <laughs> relationship is one of the major causes of people being stressed. Then me, I ask people, why are you stressed in your relationship? Because I'm in the wrong relationship. So how did you get in the wrong relationship? I don't know. Because in the first place, <laughs> it was a good relationship. Yeah. How was it a good relationship? Yes, but how was it a good relationship with due respect? What is a good relationship? Did you assess whether this relationship is going to work or not? And did you discuss with this person that you want to have a relationship? Look at the way me and you are having a very good relationship. We agreed to have an interview. Yeah. None of us is trained. We are very relaxed. Because it, it was mutual. We are here, we are here, we agreed. It's a connection. But when the relationship is not mutual, one of the parties is not comfortable. Now the question is which one? <laughs> and, then, and then as the other party becomes more uncomfortable, you, you release your load on the other party. Because even the other party is not comfortable. So there has to be a balance in that. So that the two of you don't, don't overload on each other. So the two of you carry each other's loads. Mm-hmm. And that's why one, it reaches a point where one person says, I am stressed in this relationship. And sometimes you hear them say the other party doesn't care. Yeah. Maybe the other party is not part of the relationship in the first place. So, you, stress coping ways have something to do with us asking ourselves what is going, going on in our lives. Let's go to work so that you see the same thing with work. One of the major things that people do is that when they are stressed, they tend to do a lot of work. Okay, perfect. You become an alcoholic. But the point is, 
you have not dealt with the issue that is making you to overwork. So you overwork and you overwork your body. You think your body sits back and says, this person is overworking me. So it has starts with other organs, like the heart and others. So you suffer from high blood pressure. That's why you hear people fall down when they are in the office. Because they are overworking themselves. Because they are trying to learn away from their issues. The point is very simple. What is disturbing you? Face it. And, and you cope. So, 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 so that's why mental health is becoming a major issue. Mm -hmm. And a quick one when you are there, look at something like health and like uh, finances. Mm -hmm. One of the major issues that is affecting people is, is finances. How, how are you coping with your finances? Especially you, right now, the uh, way the economy is very tough eh? I like and that. floods. And floods. <laughs> yeah. But there I was on radio the other day mm -hmm. and, I was, and I was discussing and telling people that in America right now, it's estimated that 72% of the people who are stressed and, and uh, suffering from mental health is because of finance. And then the person said, I like the way you said America, why don't you tell us about Kenya? Mm. I said, do I need to say it? <laughs> so, <laughs> they can, so, what's they the be wrong. They cannot be seven, they can be only be seven to eight. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> yes. And uh, uh, people have, you see, finances are connected to our psychological well-being. It's that simple. Yeah, you can't true. learn away from money. Because you need money. Money is part of our lives and our health. And that's why you, at the beginning you told me that most of the people with mental health associated with the Western world. Because for a long time we thought the Western world is where capitalism and money aspects come in. But now the money is here with us. We're also looking for money. You need money for school fees, house rent, uh, uh, token, <laughs> for water, <laughs> and other things. So this aspect have a toll on you. They, they take a toll. They, you cannot ignore them. That loan that you are paying, it takes a toll on you. Mm. And as it takes a toll on you, this goes to the brain. So after some time, the brain will reach a point and say, this toll is taking a toll on me. Mm. And I was telling people the other day on, on national television, one simple way to deal with financial burden is to pay your own slowly. It's a psychological thing. Mm -hmm. the, when you pay your own slowly, obviously, the loan get reduces financially, if you want us to talk economics. Yeah. But then psychologically, you are also contented because you know you are dealing with a few of your issues. So you actually start to sleep better. When you're not paying the loan, you don't sleep very well. When you have abandoned yourself with too much debt, I hope one of these days we do a talk with you mm -hmm. on young people. Yeah. And attend these lessons why they're not doing well. Actually, we shall have to do part. I, and, you can, <laughs> and you can guess why. Yeah. Uh -huh. Mental health with young people, try that. If you have very, very bad in debt, borrowing from Peter to pay Paul, uh, then from Paul to pay Patrick, uh, you don't need to, then, then you move to Fulisa, and then you have <laughs> 10, 10. <laughs> there, there's a joke that says that people, people in Fulisa uh, are more than 10 million. They can, in this country, they can elect the president and all the governors <laughs> and the senators without any contest. And a right of Madenia <laughs> of Fulisa. And right of Madenia of Fulisa. <laughs> so the thing is, uh, mm. look, look, look at some ways to tell whether you're doing well with your, with, with, your, with your health. If you are getting more into financial debt, you know which side you're on. <laughs> if you're not paying your debt, you know which side you're on. If you're not doing very well in your relationship, you know which side you're on. If you're not doing very well at work, and you're always on social media, sleeping at 3 p.m., mm -hmm. and then you only sleep for two hours and make up at five, and you cannot do the performance contract because you have not slept, and because your body is too fatigued and tired, you know which side you're on. Uh, okay, now we have <laughs> talked about the self diagnosis, yes. and then now we talk about the treatment. The treatment, uh, yes. Mm. Uh, we will be more worse True. than you were. Of course. What's the main problem that happens? The, what happens with any medicine? There's no medicine that does not have side effects. In fact, I'm very happy you have mentioned antidepressants. I, will, I was, wish you started with the easiest one okay. drinking. Yes. At the first time when someone starts drinking, they do very well. But after some time, it catches up with them. Why? Mm -hmm. Financial implications, lack of concentration, and you become addicted to it. Any addiction is an addiction. It takes over your life. So now let's go to another one, Periton. Mm -hmm. at the fa at the fa and that's why Periton is supposed to only be prescribed by a doctor. You're not sleeping very well, you start taking Periton. At first, you will sleep very well. Then after that, the, body, the Periton takes over the body. 
So yeah. before you sleep, you have to take Periton. Thank you. And even after you sleep, you will not sleep for more than four hours. Try with the people on your channel. And you come back and tell me. People. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> they, uh, they have to tell us. Yes. What Malimi is saying is it... Yes. Oh, I still call him Malim because yes, he was my fine, lecturer. Fine, fine, fine. Huh? Yeah. What he's saying, is it true? Are you also affected with the same things that he's yes. talking about yes. or not? Very good. And if you are affected... Yes. And, and, and what can you do maswadi? about it? Mm. It's just the thing about sleep. Learn simple tricks of going to sleep. That, there are so many tricks of going to sleep. When you're going to sleep, form, have, have a ritual. How do you go to sleep? Take a shower, go to bed, and then relax. And then try not to do too many things on your bed. You are on your bed, you go your to do phone. the phone. The brain picks. This is where you do your phone. The brain picks. This is where you do your laptop. Leave the laptop in the table room. Leave everything there. Of course, some of our houses are very big. They are one, or they are, they are one bedroom. So the table room and the bedroom and everything is in the same room. You're the You're the bed seater. <laughs> <laughs> the bed seater. <laughs> it's still a house and a home. So, so, so let, 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 let the brain notice that I am going to sleep. Let, let, it, let it notice I am going to sleep. It actually, it adjusts to it. Let me ask you, and this is a question I ask people. How many times, when you go to work, how many times do you now tell your leg, walk left, light, left, right? You never do. But as you walk, right now I would like you to try to go anywhere in town where you know. You, your brain just goes there. It's automatic. That's the same thing with, with sleep. Now let's go a, a bit also to a few things that you can, people, where people have, have a problem. So that's the same thing with the, with, with the, with the medicine. Mm -hmm. So any medicine that you take has its side effects. Mm -hmm. Of course. So when you take the medicine, it must have its side effect. Because you see, the medicine was made to work for a particular purpose. Mm -hmm. So the easiest way and the easiest thing with, with, to, to, to do with it is let your body get, and, and that's why we now call them activities of daily living. Like the way you wake up in the morning. How do you go about your activities? What do you do during the day? How do you organize your work? How do you organize your leisure life? How do you organize your lifestyle? So that they become part and parcel of your daily living. Uh, things like prayer and meditation, things like admiring nature. You know, ask people, how many people walk through, the, through even take people to, to a walk in the forest. And one day, just I tell people, do the easiest exercise, walk to places like Karura Forest or Gong Hills. Me, I call them Gong, uh, Gong Mountain because I can't create the mountains anyway. Walk there and you take a look. Hmm. And as you're walking through the trees, you're like, bye, this is beautiful. And, and by the way, trees have a very nice effect on the body and flowers. And then when you're walking there, as you look at town, and you walk through Gong and you go back, and people, the first thing people call me, the next day in the morning, they say, I have slept so much, I had to be woken up. And they ask me, how come sleep came? Because of two things. The body got exhausted, and you allowed the body to sleep. That's better than Peyton. But... People would prefer Periton from, from January, 1st of January to 31st December to a walk in the park. One day, free, <laughs> which improves your lungs and everything else. <laughs> That's so interesting. <laughs> so actually, it's, it, it, what you're trying to say yes. is mm. in most cases, yes. we have... Our, like we have our own medicine yeah, that medicine naturally we don't naturally. have even to take the medicine yes. that people and, are and, taking and you can summarize them in a few things if you say prayer and meditation healthy eating taking a lot of water and even fruits uh -huh. mm -hmm. having your own hobbies and interests okay uh, admiring things like nature mm -hmm. very very important mm -hmm. and then uh, don't be too preoccupied with yourself you know sometimes we are so preoccupied with ourselves mm -hmm. we think we created the universe mm -hmm. have a, a place for yourself and others mm -hmm. then stay away from alcohol drugs and other substances of abuse mm -hmm. and of course a very important one is adopting a healthy way of living mm -hmm. and it is that simple okay. and life starts as the body relaxes the body picks it up and you be healthy the more healthy you are, the more you stay away from unhealthy behaviors. Of course, the more healthy you are, the more you live a, a more satisfying life, psychologically, mentally, spiritually, morally, and intellectually. 
Uh, there was also an, uh, has been an argument about uh, social mm. media. Of course. Instagram. Yes. Has it really contributed to this? Of mess? course. We <laughs> uh, made a quick comment on social media. Social media, of course, has its major major advantages, mm. of mm. course. Mm. And, 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 and it has made us achieve a lot, including our communication, our interaction with others, even during COVID, TikTok and all, even the videos. Yeah, very good. But the addiction in them is very serious especially for children because it affects the sensory uh, memory the child becomes so attached to 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 to, to, to the video that they, they that they lack the normal sensations that you that me and you can have mm-hmm. like touch smell and everything mm-hmm. because they are too much on the media okay. the other one and the most important mm-hmm. is that we become too addicted to the social media that we get stuck there mm-hmm. and then of course it has other negative effects like uh, i'm told by young people that straight off on the social media mm-hmm. don't worry where you are so even if you live in the houses that i told you that uh, <laughs> that is a one house bedroom the house mm-hmm. you've got to go to hotels mm-hmm. and you've got to take a, a video like you and me mm-hmm. we with us taking pilau and chicken and we make everybody believe that's the life we feel Fulisa. Believe, Fulisa. <laughs> but the truth is the truth is after, after that quick plate <laughs> where we showed everybody yeah we go uh, of course you, okay. or you take a couple of pictures that's what people course, do and then you, you post them on a series on a monthly on a <laughs> but every day what are you feeding on githeri which is and githeri is not bad anyway mm. but then the point is and, and ugari and avocado i'm told it is called usa ugari skuma and avocado <laughs> very healthy but the point is eh, this is this is the force you as I like the, the good you. There's a joke we say about ladies, with due respect, they, I don't want them to get offended, mm. that they take a video and they show us who they are, and then they ask you for a date, and then you meet the, the, the lady and you're like, uh-uh, you're not the one I met. <laughs> because they are two different personalities. Mm, yeah. The reason why I say this is very serious, it creates in them somebody else that they are not, and it can badly injure your self-esteem. Because you see, this is not the person you are. This is the person you are. So the best thing is to accept ourselves the way we are. First, accept yourself. By accepting yourself, you are living a healthy life. By not accepting yourself, of course you are living an unhealthy life. Uh, you, you talked something about uh, mm. children on social media. Yes. And out of curiosity, I just wanted to know, like, mm. at what age mm. are kids allowed to be on social media? The best, the, 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 like now the recommendation is children below two years. They can only be on social media if there's something you're doing. Like if it's a baby and they're talking to an uncle or their, somebody, their father, and it's 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 that uh, or their mother or someone, and it's very necessary. Quickly, you can put them on the social media. Okay. As few minutes as those. Anyone child below twelve years, maybe. Below twelve years. Below two years. Mm-hmm. Below two years. It's unless it's absolutely necessary. Keep them away from the media, okay? Because it doesn't help them. Uh, there are even recommendations, even for children below to, to, to 12 years. 12 years is about they, they are recommending them for even 20 minutes if you can manage. Okay, if you must go very far, maybe one. Because uh, nowadays, even you see kids on TikTok. It is very unfortunate. But you see, by the way, right now they are now starting to come up with new programs, especially in the Western world, where if a child is below a particular age, they cut. Now you know we have AI, artificial intelligence. Yeah. So what happens with with media? And 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 I quickly want to tell you this: AI is very good. When the child t- uh, uh, just touches a button like like porn. You know, the child doesn't have to even know that this they are writing the word. The child might even want to write the word photography. Mm. AI, it, the, after it brings the first phonography mm. or gabrin or whatever, you know AI will bring the next thing to a friend is those things. And that's why children as early as 11 years are now getting addicted to, to pornography. It's a major issue. It's, I'm a counseling psychologist. I can tell you that for free. Mm-hmm. I've seen it. I've seen parents complaining to me after they come from the media. Is that serious? So hmm. now the new media now that what they are now trying to do is they they, they want the child to enter the age. So that like if the child enters the age below eleven years, they again now use the AI to prevent the child from assess, assessing certain certain sites. Eh? Yeah. Then the other thing is that it you can use the AI to to limit the child to about 10, 15, 20 minutes. So that after that it switches off. Yeah. Of course there are the other perspectives like um, like the way you 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 put in programs that prevent the child from entering certain sites and, prog- and programs and and, and, and uh, what about uh, TV 
The same thing with the TV. That's the same thing with the TV. The, the only good with the TV is that nowadays you see most TVs are local. Though. Yeah. And most of them now have the, the programs. Most parents have bought the programs. So you only allow the child to get into certain certain programs. Then the other ones you know. So below 12, how many years? Uh, how many, hours. for how long should they spend then on the, the TV? spend about one or two hours on TV. Get other A activities. kid who is 12 years, uh, below 12. Yeah, yes, the child... The, you should get the child other activities. You know, you know, the problem is we are so fixated that this child can only do the TV. There are many things the child can do. The child can play other games, the child can go for a walk, the child can be taken for a walk, the child can go and play with other children. Where, where, you see, you see, how can I put it? The problem is that most of us believe that now that the child is at home, or when the child comes home, there is a TV. Please sit and watch. So the child actually sits there two three hours the child goes to the toilet and comes back then the child opens the the the, the fridge takes milk and sits back and that's why we are, people are calling these children the microwave generation because they even believe milk comes from the fridge then eats bread and comes back what does it lead to think about it it leads to obesity this person simply sits this person becomes this entire this leads to procrastination we might i mean you know you know we are so contented with a quick solution that the child is fixated on the TV. But we are not asking what happens next. Imagine yourself sitting on the TV for two, three hours, or the whole day. And, 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 and I've spoken over these things, and, and, and you'd be shocked. I have been caught by parents who have literally talked to their children and told them, excuse me, it's not, it's, it, 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 it cannot be back to normal. And some are literally taking their child out. You simply take your child to see, to, to talk to them, to the auntie or to the grandpa or to somebody. And when the child reaches the new home, even if there's a, there's a TV, it's switched off and you sit together and they pray about it. And the parents come back with the child and they say, the child is so jovial today. And then they say, how come nobody had told me to use an alternative? Yeah. By the way, why are we thinking of alternative is a picnic in Malaysia? Alternative is a skipping loop. Alternative is a ball, and I would check outside your own home, your own where you stay, boys and girls playing with a ball. One ball. One ball. How much is one ball with 20, 30 children? One or two. Fully engaged. Fully engaged. It's not, I'm not talking about going to Malaysia. I'm not talking about make, making, if you can, do, do all those things you can, because we don't know how well someone, you can make all those things that you want to make. Taking the child out. It's, it's not... It's about an alternative. Okay. It's not about the cost. I, 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 I told my people in the status that uh, they asked me a question. Yes. Because I'm coming <laughs> to meet you. Okay. And they sent me this question. Okay. okay. <laughs> that uh, yes. some people are addicted to watching pornography mm. content, mm. masturbation, mm. of which it's very hard for them to come out and tell the psychologist what they're going through. And of course, that, yes. I, I, I think you are going to ask whether that means they are psychologically disturbed. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. no. Yes. <laughs> if, if you ask that, no, 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 the answer no. is yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, okay, these ones, they have already, uh, they are good, nice to themselves. They yes. know they have a problem. Very good. Yes. Uh -huh. What are the first steps these people I should like take that. before <laughs> to stop? Very interesting. This, this, this time you have done the diagnosis. So, <laughs> and the truth, they have also done the yes. diagnosis. Yes. The first place is the most important thing with any psychological issue is to recognize it yourself. That's the most important. And I tell people, please, before you ask any help, the fact that you've recognized you have an issue, that's the best part. It's the best part. Okay, so the first part is, mm -hmm. uh, let me tell them uh, a quick one. Mm -hmm. The best phonography is the one you develop with your partner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the two of you synchronize with each other. Because most of those videos are fake. Of course, they play them again and again. <laughs> so the best phonography is between you and your partner. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. forget yes. Mm -hmm. Now, now the other issues like like you've said, like the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the 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 smoking and everything and all that. The first is to recognize it. The second is sometimes it helps to also identify have a purpose and a meaning in life. Mm -hmm. I will quickly explain what is that. Yeah. A, 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 a meaning in life is to find out what is your life about mm -hmm. and the purpose is fulfilling it. So ask yourself what do I want in life and how can I do it? So go out for it. When you do, you actually start noticing that these things are actually not part of your life. 
like the drinking and the smoking and the masturbation and everything you actually start noticing this is this is not what i wanted in life it's it's a, it's a very simple thing that i have that i i get a shock that when people call me and say i couldn't believe that two words can make a meaning in my life meaning and a purpose so you start actually fighting which is your hobby what do you like doing what don't you like doing and life changes suddenly and you actually start even fighting yourself so busy with so many activities because the first thing is to recognize it to yourself you see you must come to terms you know there's something about human beings and us people we don't want to understand the most important thing in life yourself and yeah you understand yourself yeah what do i want where do i want second what is my purpose and meaning you actually start and people call me and say i can't believe that you didn't tell me how not to do with this it's not it's not it's not the, the problem is not what you are dealing with the problem is backwards the, the the primary problem is your meaning and purpose in life when you get the purpose and meaning mm-hmm. and i'm very happy that you are smiling mm-hmm. because you you i'm <laughs> sure you also when you did when them asking those comments you ask mm-hmm. tell me like another journalist who has me mm-hmm. when people like this i ask when do they get time for this <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then when I had my meeting and I said, I can now connect the two. Yeah. When do you get, when, when, when naturally do you get time for this? Yeah. Because when you have a meaning and purpose in life, you start out training what is it you want to do with your life. Mm-hmm. You get your hobbies right, you get your meditation, meditation right, you get your prayers right, you get your exercises right, mm-hmm. you get your admiring nature right, and then you even know who are your friends, who are your relatives who are your activities of the day and then you get the days to 24 hours you remove the 6 to 8 for sleeping you organize the rest and then you are like yeah but if the person cannot be able to stop they can seek help and help can seeking is very important from a cons- uh, qualified uh, person even a, if they can quickly get even a, a pastor who is helpful or anybody who is helpful but of course if nothing else failing they can get assistance and help from a counseling psychologist or a psychologist or a psychotherapist okay uh okay now I'm, i'm sure you are wrapping up huh? yes. because i don't want to take much of your time you're okay. rushing somewhere uh-huh. uh some people they have made a mm. mental issue to uh, be uh. more of fashion yeah fashion and style mm. you know come up ah niko na mental issues niko na niko depressed eh, niko depressed eh, please oh. understand me eh, like, like my director lost uh, mm. uh, duncan behind the camera mm. he lost three phones at once yeah mm. ah, well. <laughs> well. but for him it mm. was understood but some people they just take it for fun mm. you just try to ask to talk to them or have yeah. a conversation with them they just like mm. oh i'm depressed well let me i will quickly tell you this is the same thing with stress You know when people say I'm stressed. Of course who is not stressed. We are all trying to cope with the right issues. It's the same thing with depression. It's people are starting to take it as an escape route. Especially the young people. And uh, it's very very unfortunate. You should not you should not uh, you know I'm depressed, I'm depressed. You see depression is a disease. Well, let me ask you. You go and take, get your salary. The other day I asked this, but then the other day I went to one of the radio stations. Let me show you, let go, as you say, we wait up. And I give an example of this young man who goes and gets a salary, mm-hmm. of about a hundred uh, ninety salary, got, yeah. Then he goes and buys some zinger for 45,000. Then he takes it the whole night with his friends. And then, of course, you know, he has paid his issues and whatever. Yeah. So after two weeks, the guy tells us he's depressed. So I said, how do you tell us you're depressed? You were the one with the zinger. and enjoy yourself. So after the radio we had a lot of chats. Mm-hmm. When we finished, the first thing, the first guy I met like this told me, I was listening to you. That is what my friend did last week. <laughs> I am telling you, I almost fell down. Nika mulisa what do you mean? Because that example had been given by somebody how a guy goes with a hard day and night, goes and takes a musinga for 5000 and he could enjoy. Life is in the here and now. Now Then you stay with your token on atufanyia uko kwa prot. Then you tell us you are depressed. Excuse me. When you are enjoying with your 45,000 muzinga, which which me even me I can't afford. Where well, did you call us? Now, when you go to Fasha, I am told the sun must set. Near near our some waters. 
and you spend the whole weekend. Then on Monday you are unable to leave, and you are calling us here telling us it will be a fair. Then you tell us you are depressed and it's a disease. Me say my son changa motors are my issue. When you uh, when, <laughs> when you enjoying yourself in in fashion, did you call us? No. Nope. Let me ask you. I saw that I write up. Uh, most suicide happened in April and May. Why? Because in this advice, when people are enjoying themselves with money, and for the my brothers, the men, the young men, they have gone to on tours with their girlfriends, new girlfriends, and left their old girlfriend or their wives. <laughs> then in January, February, she leaves you. Then you tell us you are depressed. Okay, you are. Nobody is saying it's not a disease, but let us go it the other way. And that's why I honestly, with due respect, I like your question. We must start asking people, what is it that we can do about our lives? What's your parting shot? <laughs> that is it. <laughs> we, 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 must, we must redefine our lives. Mental health is not a mystery. Mental health is not something out there. It can, one out of four people suffer from mental health. But the truth is, it is also true that people are stressed, but we must also develop resilience and we must learn coping strategies. And one of the areas we must start with is changing our way of life and our lifestyle for the better, not for the worse. Okay. Because if we change it for the better, and that's the purpose of such a program, we are going to live more fulfilling lives and more contented lives. Where can people find you? Oh, where uh, can for those who want to, to look for, for you. Want to look for me, I'm online. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Wango. You just Google. But I've got a telephone number 0726 056489. 0726 056489. And, uh, and I also like you to, to subscribe to this channel. And uh, what we we'll do with my friend here is that we, we when you t we put a few things there, we will do a few things also for young men. We will tell you 10 things. Mm. That if when you are a young man, you just look at them and you don't need to ask anybody. They are the red flags. You do 10 red flags and of course, 10 happy flags. Yes. White flags. Yes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. for giving us your time. And I told you guys, you, you are supposed to have a pen and a paper. Of course, I had. Young will come to Kenya, lakini. Cheza chini. And by the way, uh, we have rebranded our website and now it's looking stylish and classy. Kindly, if you haven't checked it out, can log in to www.thedailywhistle.co.ke and also subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Daily Whistle. You can also follow me on other social media platforms at Wandabo Wanyama. Kila pahali mbaka kwa simu ya girlfriend yako pole. That's a bad joke. Sindio? Pole, pole. Thank you very much. And if you have any comment, any question, you want Dr. to come back kindly and Capuccini and to the first doctor he's a busy man you know and by the way he was awarded a OGW by the former <laughs> president of Uhuru Kenyatta so many mekana real OG thank you very much and have a good day